Hi dear students, welcome to Geeta's classes. This class we are going to see Laplace transform, introduction and definition. So what is Laplace transform? Why should we learn this Laplace transform? Actually, uh, consider some differential equation. Consider the topic differential equation. If you have some differential equation, we have learned so many methods to solve the differential equation. Sometimes we may not be able to solve the differential equations by the methods what we have studied. In that case, we can convert them using or we can solve the differential equations by changing them or by using Laplace transform that is by changing the variables to another set of variables and we can will be uh, we can be we can solve the equations easily okay so only for our convenience we can transform the variable transform from the name itself you can understand we are going to transform from one variable t to another variable s yes. That is real variable t to uh, the complex variable s. Yes. The domain itself is changing so that in the second domain we can solve the equation easily. Okay. So uh, the Laplace transform it is an integral transform that converts a function of a real variable to a function of a complex variable s. Yes. That is from t domain to s yes domain. From t domain to s yes domain we are changing. As this transforms uh, this Laplace transform, it is transforming ordinary differential equations into algebraic equations. Uh, because it is transforming like that, it has many applications in science and engineering. So, major application of the main application of Laplace transform is for solving the differential equations. Okay. So, first definition we will see what is uh, Laplace transform, how to define Laplace transform. Let f of t consider a function f of t for which if it is defined only for positive values of t. f of t is a function, it is defined only for positive values of t. Okay, so f of t is defined only for t greater than 0. So the Laplace transform of f of t denoted by L of f of t or f bar of s is defined as integral 0 to infinity e power minus st f of t dt. This is the definition. That is, if you want to find out the Laplace transform of f of t, it should be multiplied by e power minus st and integrate them, integrate it with respect to t from 0 to infinity. Okay. So, what will be the output? It will be now you are integrating with respect to the variable t and you are substituting the limits for t, right? With respect to whatever variable you are integrating, we will substitute that value. So, after substitution, you will not have t, you will get a function of s alone. So, let us denote it by f bar of s. So, L of f of t is transforming the variable t to s. So, after finding the Laplace transform, you will not have a function of t. Please remember that you will have a function of s only, okay. So, f bar of s. So, if L of f of t is f bar of s, that is, if you can find out, if you have found out the Laplace transform of f of t as f bar of s, then you can say from f bar of s, we can go back to f of t also using the function L inverse of f bar of s is equal to f of t. That is, if f of t is set to, uh, sorry, here, f of t is said to be inverse Laplace transform of f bar of s. L inverse is called the inverse Laplace transform of f bar of s. The symbol L, it is transforming the, the function f of t to f bar of s. It is called Laplace transform operator. And the symbol L inverse, now L, L inverse transforms from f bar of s to f of t. It is called inverse Laplace transform operator. Okay. So, please remember L of L is, a, uh, is an operator which transforms from T to S. Yes. T to S. Yes. And L inverse is an operator which is transforming from S yes to T. Okay. Remember these things. Now, we have some more definitions that is piecewise continuous. Actually, we are going to find out the 
sufficient condition i told you laplace transform you can find out only if the integral exists okay so there are some conditions to be satisfied for finding the sufficient condition for the laplace transform to exist so first and for finding that condition we have we should know some more definitions one is piecewise continuous piecewise continuous means continuous function means if f of t is t greater than 0 then uh, continuously it is defined in between that is not discontinuous in at any point okay that is continuous but sectionally continuous or piecewise continuous is you in a comma b in the close interval a comma b if the same interval can be divided into sub intervals and in each of the sub interval it should be continuous and at the end points you must have the both left and right hand limits okay that is for example you can divide 0 to infinity if you consider 0 uh, at, uh, from 0 to 10 it is t squared at the point x is equal to at the point uh, uh, t is equal to 10 it is not defined t squared uh, it is defined from 0 to 10 as t squared and greater than 10 at as 2t plus 5 okay this function is a is an example for piecewise continuous or sectionally continuous another example another uh, definition is exponential order function of exponential order a function f of t is said to be of exponential order if it, it satisfies this condition what is the condition limit t tends to infinity e power minus a t f of t if you can if you find out you must you, it should be a finite value if this limit is finite then we can say that f of t is of exponential order so now the sufficient condition for the existence of Laplace transform is the Laplace transform of a function exists for s greater than a if it satisfies the two conditions. First condition is f of t is piecewise continuous in any limited interval a to b and the function f of t is of exponential order. So, if these two conditions are satisfied, then you can say that Laplace transform, you can find out the Laplace transform of the function. So, here what you have to remember, L of the definition, L of f of t is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus st f of t dt. This you have to remember. What is f of t? f of t is a function which is defined for t greater than 0. And the resultant value is a function of S only. Okay, so this is the basic definition of Laplace transform. In the next class, we can find out the Laplace transform of some uh, basic functions or uh, elementary functions. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening.